determine the length of the missing side of the triangle, then determine the perimeter and area, round to the nearest hundredth as needed. Because we have a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of this missing leg here. The Pythagorean theorem states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the lengths of the two legs, and c is the length of the hypotenuse. So looking at the right triangle, this side here is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle and also the longest side of the right triangle. The legs A and B are the two sides that form the right angle. It does not matter which leg is A and which leg is B. Let's call this leg A and call this leg B. And now applying the Pythagorean theorem, we can determine the length of this side here, which is X centimeters. Since A squared plus B squared must equal C squared, we have X squared plus 12 squared must equal 16 squared. And now we need to solve the equation for x. 12 squared equals 144, 16 squared equals 256, which gives us the equation x squared plus 144 equals 256. The next step is isolate x squared by subtracting 144 on both sides. Simplifying. We have x squared equals 256 minus 144 is 112. And now to solve for x, we need to undo the exponent of two or the squaring by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. We're only concerned about the positive square root because we know x is a length. The square root of x squared is equal to x. x is equal to the square root of 112, which we will now use the calculator to round to two decimal places. So we enter second x squared for the square root, 112, enter. Notice how we have a three in the third decimal place or a thousandths place value, and therefore we round down, x is approximately 10.58. Which means the length of the missing side has a length of approximately 10 point five eight centimeters. And now let's determine the perimeter and the area. The perimeter is a distance around the outside of the triangle. So if we think of walking around the triangle, the perimeter is approximately 10.58 centimeters plus 16 centimeters plus 12 centimeters. So again, the perimeter is approximately we're using the approximate symbol here because 10.58 is a rounded value. So again, the perimeter is approximately 10.58 centimeters plus 16 centimeters plus 12 centimeters. Let's go ahead and determine this sum vertically, lining up the corresponding place values. If we wanted to, we could write 16 as 16.00 and 12 as 12.00. And now we bring the decimal down into the sum and add Six plus two is eight, and one plus one plus one is three. The perimeter is approximately 38.58 centimeters. And now let's determine the area. The area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height, where for the given right triangle, the base is 12 centimeters and the height is approximately 10.58 centimeters. And therefore the area is equal to one half times 12 centimeters times 10.58 centimeters. And again, because 10.58 is rounded, let's use the approximate sign here. And now let's determine the product. One half times 12 is six, which means the area is approximately six times 10.58 and now let's determine this product, but let's change the order to make it easier to multiply by hand. We have 10.58 times six. Because 10.58 has two decimal places and six has zero decimal places, the product must contain two decimal places. And now multiplying by six, six times eight is 48. Record the eight before an exchange with the four. Six times five is 30 plus four is 34. Record the four, perform an exchange with a three. Six times zero is zero, plus three is three. And six times one is six. 
Again, the product must contain two decimal places. So starting on the right, we move over two decimal places and the product is 63.48 and therefore the area is approximately 63.48 square centimeters or centimeters squared. Approximately 63.48 square centimeters would fit into the given right triangle. Before we go, let's go ahead and check this product on the calculator. We have one divided by two times 12 times 10.58, which does verify our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.